you know, these are terms that we didn't know a year ago, emergency use authorization, and now we're all learning. You know, I, I want to kind of walk us through that process. I think this is critical to understand because there is deep rigor here. This is a fully science data driven process and it's very transparent. And I think it's very important to also recognize that there are diverse representatives in terms of the scientists who are reviewing these materials, both in terms of the career folks at FDA, as well as the people on those independent scientific advisory committees. So to answer your question directly, whenever a manufacturer is submitting an application for emergency use authorization, it really is on them to provide evidence on two key things, and that's safety and efficacy. And I'm sure we'll be talking much more about both of those things tonight, but obviously safety is making sure that there are not adverse events, right? And that it doesn't pre prevent any harm to people. This goes through various phases. We'll hear about phases of trials and those early phases are really focused on safety. By the time we get to phase three of the clinical trials, we're really looking at not just safety anymore, that's proven to move on, but also how well is this working against whatever it is we're looking at in this case, really preventing severe infection, you know, hospitalization and death from COVID-19. So safety, efficacy, also, you know, we don't talk about as much, but the FDA wants to make sure that there's quality in that vaccine, mm -hmm. that the manufacturer can show that they can make that uh, vaccine of high quality sort of over and over again. So lots of information that comes in with experts there to review it, safety, efficacy, and quality. 